this module is about the evolutionary um, theory of mating behavior or interpersonal attraction. It's based on Darwin's theory, which is survival of the fittest, and the people who are more fit and more attractive to others are more likely to mate, and their genes will be um, passed on. So this theory, uh, it's kind of it's looking at that for thousands of years we were not a civilized society there was many years when we were just hunters and gatherers and then we slowly transitioned to a more civilized uh, civilization civilization um, so it's saying that you know our brain evolves slowly but we still have kind of the remnant of the caveman time so basically it men and women had different uh, strategies for um, increasing their offspring's ability to survive. Uh, so David Buss is really um, famous in studying this evolutionary theory. And so he went to 80 different cultures across the world and he asked men, how many partners would you like to have? And the average number that he got was around eight. Oh, that was in the next year, around eight. And then he went to these same 80 different cultures and he asked women, how many partners would you like within the next year? And the average was between one and two. So men are more likely to seek out multiple partners. Um, I believe I've seen a statistic somewhere. Don't quote me on this because, <coughs> sorry, they tend to change a lot. Uh, from source to source, but approximately 50% of men in stable relationships report that they are have cheated on their partner, and approximately 25% of women have cheated on their partner. So let's see why this might be. So this evolutionary theory, um, basically if a man sleeps with just one woman, then he's only got uh, the gene pool for that one woman but if he sleeps with many different women then he gets more diversified genes so the men that actually survived through time were the men who had a preference for more than one woman and then the men that had preferred just to have one woman were uh, d don't have as large of a gene pool um, whereas women, they don't when in caveman times, they don't necessarily um, benefit from having multiple partners. There are advantages from having multiple partners that you could have more resources, but then you have to combat that men tend to be more jealous of infidelity and women tend to be more jealous of spending time. Um, but so women were better off, their survival strategy was better off um picking the most powerful man the man with a lot of resources um so men tend to report wanting more mates than women uh but women seem to place more of an emphasis on how much money a man has rather than um rather you know men don't place that much emphasis so I'm not sure how you feel about this because I know a lot of things are changing now, but it used to be, this was a while ago, it used to be that I could ask the class and I'd say, oh, okay, how many of you um, would date someone who rides the bus? And many more men would raise their hand than women. And then I would ask them, so what are some questions that you would ask people um, about somebody brand new that they're dating and the men tend to say the first question that they would say was oh is she hot and the women say well what does he do and so men seem to place a little bit more of an emphasis on um, looks so let's see what kind of looks they like uh, here we go uh, both men and women prefer a romantic partner that is healthy so that's what we find about beauty is across all those cultures that Buss went to is basically he says there are some universal uh, signs of beauty and one is youth, two is clear skin, healthy hair, um, then they talk about this waist to hip ratio 
So the perfect waist to hip ratio across all cultures is a 0.7. So if you would measure around your um, hips and then you measure around your waist um, and you divide them together and you get a 0.7, if you get a 0.7, then you have the perfect body. Whether or not that culture likes a heavier body or a thinner body, the waist to hip ratio. For the men, it's uh, they found a 0.6 from his shoulders to his waist, so you measure your shoulders, you measure your waist, and then you divide your shoulders into your waist, and if you get a 0.6, then you have the perfect body. So um, why would this be? Actually, the 0.7 in women uh, shows, um, kind of shows her fertility. So they found uh, estrogen levels seem to create this uh, waist to hip ratio. Also, um, many women can attest that even if they lose all the weight after having multiple babies, their waist to hip ratio seems to change because the skin has stretched out and the organs have moved a lot. So it would show how many babies she's already had. So there's, there's something um, there. Now, women across multiple cultures, we talked about the shoulder to waist uh, ratio, but also women tend to prefer tall men. And so uh, when you think about it, being taller would probably have given an advantage for hunting and heights. So, um, uh, so because they could see farther, they would have a longer reach if they were in a battle, so on and so forth. Um, so, these are some preferences here. Let's see some other things that are involved in this evolutionary theory. Differences in jealousy. So, the landmark study with this is. Um, they asked, um, they asked men and women, what would you be more jealous of? Would you be more jealous of your partner's infidelity? Or would you be more jealous of your partner spending time and having um, spending money on them? And basically they found that men seem to be more upset about uh, the infidelity, whereas women were more upset about him spending time and resources. And this would go along with this theory as well, that um, men never really know, is it my baby? And so his wife, potentially having sex with another man, he could end up raising the genes of another man. And women, uh, they are trying to choose a man subconsciously that will give her the time and resources. So if he starts spending time and his resources on another woman, then she's out of luck. So nowadays, women can make as much money as men. So I think that this is all changing, but there could be this subconscious push towards this evolutionary theory because in this whole module, we've been talking about gender differences, that we find gender differences in the brain. And why would we have these gender differences? And this theory is trying to explain why we might see these gender differences because it helps us to survive.